All right, uh, moving away from that, let's move to other conversations outside Nigeria. After he retired from politics in 2021 due to a devastating defeat in the presidential election, former Zambian President Edgar Lungu is back. His six years in office left the country's economy heavily in debt, plunging the living conditions of Zambians into a precarious state. Now, speaking at a commemoration service uh, to the former president and leader of his patriotic front, PF Party, uh, Michael Sata, who died in office in 2014, Mr. Lungu said, and I quote, I am ready to fight from the front, not from the rear, in defense of democracy. Those who are ready for this fight, please come along with me. I'm ready for anything. Uh, let's uh, have you take a look at the video of um, Edgar Lungu speaking. After careful and deep reflection and right consultation, including prayer, all naked efforts by those in power to annihilate the biggest opposition fight the PF is under today, the PF, using their studio and institutions of government, I have decided to return to Africa. <laughs> Joining us now to talk about the long, maybe some will refer to as a long-awaited return of the former president is Aaron Ngambi, geopolitics analyst. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Good morning to you and good morning to the viewers. Thank All you right, I'd like me. to find out exactly how uh, people are reacting to Edgar Lungu's return. Some would say that his six-year presidential term brought untold hardship for Zambians. So is this something that the majority of Zambians are very excited about? I could see people cheering in the video. Uh, is this something that people should be very excited about, or are very excited about, rather? Well, um, there are mixed uh, reactions to that announcement. Now, uh, the people that you see in the video are people that, um, by and large, are supporters and cadets of the party that Mr. Lungu belongs to, because this announcement was made at the uh, memorial of the founding father, of the party which Mr. Lungu belongs to, uh, which is the Patriotic Front. So um, his predecessor, Mr. Sata, who died in office, um, you know, was a man that was loved by the people. He was a man that uh, the common people would actually relate to. And so when he died, um, it was premature. He uh, got sick in office. And so he did not finish his uh, five-year term of office. And so Mr. Lungu came as a successor. And so since then, um, Mr. Lungu went on to uh, lose the elections to uh, his opponent in 2021, who is now the president, Haka Inde Ichilema. And so you see that um, the mixed reactions to this because um, the people that belong to the party of Mr. Lungu that you see in the videos, of course, are excited. But there are also those people that feel like this is not a good move for Mr. Lungu to come back because he's the only remaining and surviving former head of state. Oh, well, you know, maybe we should also talk about, you know, Hakainde Hichilema's uh, current run, you know, as president. And um, where do you think Zambians, you know, might be leaning towards? You know, if there are going to be elections in the next few years, um, do you think uh, Hakainde Hichilema has performed well enough? Uh, to maybe, you know, have people um, uh, take his side or, you know, be fully behind him? Well, uh, there's no doubt that uh, the performance of President Haka Inde Ichilema, the last two years that he's been elected since 2021, has actually been very disappointing for most of the Zambians. Any well-meaning Zambian um, who is not um, inclined to any political party and much less the party of Mr. Haka Inde Ichilema would agree with me that there is a high cost of living that is going on, that the currency, which is the kwacha in Zambia, is not doing as uh, Mr. Hichilema promised, will be doing under his uh, watch. And so the economic indicators are not looking good for him. And not only that, the uh, high levels of unemployment and poverty levels in the country are at their highest as we speak. And so all these factors are actually working against him. So what has happened is that because of some of the failures of his government so far, he is uh, slowly and surely losing support, even for those people that voted for him in 2021. Therefore, Mr. Ichilema has started to do what usually uh, most African politicians begin to do when they're losing base or grip on the people. 
they begin to um, be authoritarian and autocratic and also shrinking the democratic space. This is happening in Zambia as we speak. And the reason why Mr. Lungu has come back now, it's because um, his political party, the party that he resigned from after being defeated in 2021, um, he's now, you know, essentially split it into two factions. There's a faction of someone called Mao Sampa who's come through and declared himself the party president of uh, the Patriotic Front. And uh, there are sessions that he's actually sponsored by the state. And uh, therefore, uh, Mr. Akainde is walk, uh, working around the clock to see that he can destroy the Patriotic Front, which is the party of Mr. Lungu. Yes, Mr. Lungu has uh, been forced to come back so that he can, uh, he thinks is the only one that can bring a unity and hold the party together before the next election in 2026. Right. Um, he might have his thoughts on how he can um, unite the party before 2026. But what would you say is the strength of the party in the country? Uh, are people leaning and yearning towards the party? Would you say that they have garnered strong popularity amongst the citizens? Well, that's a very good question because uh, since they lost power in 2001, uh, we would have expected that uh, the party of Mr. Salongo, the Patriotic Front, would gradually disintegrate and that uh, they will no longer have a lot of support from the people. But that hasn't happened in the last two years. Despite all the corruption that was going on when the party was in power, uh, despite all the uh, propaganda that the opposition waged against them, um, you know, two years on, after losing power and going back into the opposition, the Patriotic Fund has actually proved that their structures are intact. So you have these ward uh, chairman and branch chairman and district chairman and constituency chairman who are still members of the political party. So the party still um, enjoys a strong base and support across the country. Um, and they also have a lot of uh, members of parliament. And so because of that, I don't think that the Patriotic Fund is going away anytime soon. They may have a lot of setbacks. Of course, the ruling party of Mr. Hakkainde Chilema will fight, will try to split the party, will try to destroy them, just like we have seen happen before in Zambia. Whenever a political party loses power, the party that comes in does everything to split that power, they I mean, split that party, they do everything to uh, destabilize them, and within five years, that party is nowhere to be talked about. So most people think that the only person that can hold the party together is Mr. Lungu because he has some influence on the ground and that he's still favored by a lot of Zambians. And and so we only wait to see what happens going forward. Yeah, well, you know, um, there's also a reason um, Edgar Lungu lost the elections. And of course, Akande Ichilema was um, uh, brought into office. It's, it's I mean... So it's it's kind of heartbreaking to see that the same person who somehow, some way was kicked out by the people, you know, is trying to come back uh, to power. Um, this other Hakanji Hichilema has failed that badly that they wouldn't mind Edgar Lungu or there's just not many options. And it's maybe because the political space in Zambia is not expanding enough to, you know, accommodate more people and, you know, uh, give the Zambians more options, you know, somehow, some way. Is this maybe what... The situation might be well uh actually there are a lot of political parties in zambia and um most of the parties actually are parties that are founded by people who uh, maybe at one point or the other they were affiliated with mr lungu's party or they broke away from the Lung mr lungu's party but you know um it takes a long time to actually build a political party if you look at Mr. Akainde Ichilema himself, he was in the opposition, took over a political party that someone else left with about 42 members of parliament at the time, already a well-established political party. He came in in 2006 as a leader of that uh, party, and he went on for almost 14 to 15 years in the opposition, just trying to struggle to uh, be elected. And, and for him, at least he had a base when he came in, but there are others that have to start from the scratch. And that takes a long time. And so this is why the opposition looks like it is fragmented. It looks like there are not too many uh, viable options that can be electable and defeat Mr. Aka in the HLMA. And so Lungu looks attractive because for the most part, people know him. He has a record that he ran on. People know the mistakes that he made. There were a lot of 
Kaderism and, and hooliganism in his political party. And they've talked about that openly. The patriotic front, the party of Mr. Lungu, they've said we made mistakes. This is why we were kicked out. And if we come back, we'll make sure that we don't make these mistakes before. But on the other hand, Mr. Akainde Chilema's party, which is the United Party for National Development, in the opposition, they've made a lot of promises. And this is what the problem is, because more than 60, 70, 80% of the promises they made, they haven't fulfilled almost halfway through their term yeah, in, in office. And so people are beginning to look at them as, you know, these were just desperate for power. These people were just saying all sorts of things and promising things that they knew they were not to deliver. Therefore, people are now looking at perhaps Mr. Lungu might be a repentant man. He might be a man that owes up to his mistakes and sees that he made a lot of mistakes and he asks for forgiveness and that he wants to come back. So this is what we are dealing with right now. But we still have other opposition members, I mean, other opposition leaders and their parties. Uh, but th those are still growing their membership base uh, countrywide. Do you think that um, Edgar Lungu will be given an opportunity to, for a fair fight come 2026? And I ask this because um, some analysts have criticized Hakainde Hichilema for using the same high-handed tactics that he criticized for many years whilst he was in office. Recently, we did talk about how Edgar Lungu was prevented from going for a conference in South Korea, and then he did take the government to court, a case which he eventually withdrew. And sometime last month, he was also criticized for jogging, what they referred to as political jogging. So do you think that he will be given the opportunity to fight fair? Or do you think that, you know, from what the indications are, there might be some elements of political bullying that would be employed? Yeah, um, you know, the honest truth is that um, President Haka Indi Chilema has disappointed a lot of people, including myself, on issues of governance. We expected that he will actually um, practice what he was preaching when he was in the opposition. But uh, it turns out that Mr. Haka Indi Chilema as president, he is uh, completely a different person. As we speak now, one of the leaders of the opposition, he is actually in hospital, after being brutally, um, his house been broken into by the police and been picked up and also being uh, tortured as we have had. These are allegations against the state. And so um, we are seeing a lot of problems when it comes to the way the police are handling political parties and political leaders. We are seeing a lot of problems by the regime, the presidency of Haka Inde Ichilama using certain, um, certain methods that uh, disadvantage his opponents uh, that are making it uh, not conducive for them to be able to freely engage with the public and talk to the public. So you can only imagine because this is not even a year of an election. We are almost two and a half years away from an election, but yet we're seeing all these restrictions and all these uh, tactics that the president and his regime are using against the opposition. So the clear-cut answer to your question is that I don't, honestly speaking, I don't see Mr. Lungu even being on the ballot or being anywhere near um, the election as a candidate uh, for the opposition uh, patriotic front. And I think that Mr. Lungu perhaps knows this already. The reason for that is that in 2021, just before the general election, uh, his eligibility was questioned before the Constitutional Court. People petitioned and the Constitutional Court actually ruled in favor because Mr. Lungu had been elected twice as president of the Republic of Zambia. Yet our constitution only requires that you be president and serve two terms. But when the matter came up before the constitutional court, the constitutional court said that the remaining years that Mr. Lungu took over, uh, he came through a presidential by election. And so those years that he saved after Mr. Sata died, you know, more than halfway through his term, that that did not account that did not amount to uh, a term of office. Therefore, his only term that he was elected from 2016 and 2021 was the only first term that he served. So already his eligibility in 2021 was controversial. And I see that if Nungu becomes the candidate again uh, to challenge President Haka in the in 2026, that case will come before the Constitutional Court. And who knows, maybe that uh, judgment will be reversed. Therefore, Mr. Lungu may not even be on the ballot. ask you, you know, if corruption charges leveled against 
his wife and his son, you know, if these would be conversations that would come up. But we hope that, you know, we can have you again join us. But I mean, yes or no, do you think it will come up? Oh, yes, uh, definitely. Um, there will be a lot of uh, issues now with his family and the alleged corruption cases. Right. Um, there'll be a lot of issues with some of his friends and party members. All of those will be accelerated now that he has announced that he's back in active politics. All right, so fingers crossed. Right. Uh, let's see what the next, the coming days look like. Thank you, Aaron and Gambi, for joining us. Uh, to have a wonderful day. Thank you for having me. You have a wonderful day, too.